Hello, and welcome to our showcase presentation on making connections to support STEM transitions for middle school girls, work that is funded by the STEM Next Opportunity Fund and the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. In this short presentation, I'm going to describe some of the work we've been engaged in as part of this project over the past year. My name is Maggie Don, and I work as an associate project scientist out of the Connected Learning Lab at UC Irvine. Our research team includes Drs. Mimi Ito, Kylie Pepler, and Vera Michael Check. In this presentation, I'll offer an overview of why we focus on making connections, the design principles for making connections, offer an overview of the research initiative we've been working on, and also preview the emerging strategies coming out of this work. Here, we want to offer a small teaser of the project to set us up for more robust conversation during the conference. So first with why a focus on making connections. Here we see the perspective of a young girl who notes her lack of connection to STEM, as well as lack of opportunities she sees for herself in STEM. In research on STEM learning, girls of color increasingly describe persistent connect disconnection and lack of support for engaging their STEM interests. This lack of connection is pervasive. These different areas are siloed from one another. Learning that happens at school is separate from learning at home, in the community, and these are all disconnected from future career opportunities. Part of the underlying problem is that learning is often conceptualized as this pipeline rather than as a network. But when you talk to people who have successfully found a place for themselves, there's actually a whole web of people, organizations, and opportunities that have been supports throughout the years, only some of which are connected to the formal educational pipeline. So when we shift from a pipeline model to one that is more ecological, we may think about centering youth interests, but still at best there are few points of connection, and overall the ecosystem is disconnected. So this project is concerned with making these connections more integral to how STEM learning is designed, holding youth interests at the center. This work uses the Connected Learning Framework as a starting place, an asset-based framework centering on youth interests and identities to support learning in a more connected and ecological way. So there are particular elements of connected learning environments, including here listed in pink, the sponsorship of youth interests, shared practices, shared purpose, and connections across settings. Of these elements, connections across settings is the one that we find least supported in out-of-school learning settings. So digging deeper into connections across settings, this element is enacted through four specific design principles and strategies, including coordinating learning between settings such as home and school, brokering new learning opportunities for youth, using openly networked infrastructure, and making learning visible. Through these design principles, educators and program leaders can effectively support youth in connected learning pursuits. So when we think about how making connections can support individual learners, we might think of a hypothetical young person, Mia. Mia might show interest in STEM as a sixth grader to her science teacher, but here is where it can break down immediately. That teacher might not recognize that interest or more likely the teacher might not know how to support or cultivate that interest beyond her participation in class. But if that interest is cultivated, she might be connected to a summer camp experience where she can explore that interest and deepen it. And that teacher might act as a broker between Mia, the camp, and her family, helping Mia's family buy into Mia furthering her STEM interest. Now, sometimes the camp might be, uh, it, my, the sometimes the camp might be it. But if it's designed with connections in mind, the leaders at that camp are thinking about the opportunities beyond that experience. The internships, connecting youth to the local community, connecting back to school to figure out ways to support those connections to opportunity. And finally, because connections have been integral to Mia's story, her STEM network is expanded beyond that initial science class at school to other youth and communities, and her identity as a STEM kind of person is also expanded because she has had multiple experiences in STEM across different communities and contexts. And this is the kind of connected STEM learning we're looking for. 
In terms of thinking about designing for these connections, here we offer a preview of some of the work we've been engaged with across the 50 state network. This is a quote from a program leader in Massachusetts who described how she related to a disconnect. In this case, it was between her family and the more formal and traditional structures of school. How her parents, like the parents of many girls she works with, want their children to be successful, but perhaps they don't know the steps. So that purposeful connection between after school and home, in this case, helps to thread that needle. So we are just over 12 months into our collaboration with STEM Next and the Moore Foundation uh, and this initiative on making connections. So we'll offer an overview of the research we've done to date. Our research takes a three-pronged approach in which we are first aiming to identify the ways in which programs and networks are making connections to support STEM transitions for middle school girls. Our research also aims to evaluate how effective these models and strategies are for making desired connections. And finally, we are interested in how to support other programs and networks in taking up strategies for making connections. Here is a list of the five state networks with whom we're working for this research at this phase of the work. As you can see, we're working with leaders and youth across Alabama, Florida, Massachusetts, Nebraska, and Pennsylvania. So the strategies we are studying in depth with these five states are listed here, and each aligns with a particular design principle for making connections, such as strategy four, which focuses on the brokering work necessary to facilitate near peer mentorships and transitions to academics and careers. During our showcase, we're happy to discuss any of these strategies and our work with the state networks more in depth. To offer a sense of where we are with this project, we interviewed network and program leaders, as well as youth mentors across our five states. We then mapped the strategies they were describing and that they were trying out for making connections to the connected learning framework, and are now working with partners on refining these strategies. We are also aiming toward a toolkit design for making connections to share across the 50 state network. We are looking forward to speaking with and learning more from you all at the Connected Learning Summer, excuse me, at the Connected Learning Summit later this month. Thank you so much.